I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. Hey, welcome to Life of the Brand. We have a few new faces here that I'm excited to introduce. This is Dane Izell and Eric Mayhall. And we are going to talk today about social engineering. And uh, a recent Google video was leaked, um, which has caused a, a big debate as usual these days. Um, the video was shared internally within Google and imagines a future of total data collection, where Google helps nudge users into alignment with their goals, uh, custom prints, personalized devices to collect more data, and even guides the behavior of entire populations to solve potential global problems like poverty and disease. So this video was titled The Selfish Ledger. And uh, Eric, tell me about what, what the origin of that, you know, that term is coming from. The selfish ledger, it, it inherently has a negative connotation to it, which I think is why a lot of this has exploded across social media as a problem, but it's more of a reference to Richard Dawkins' evolutionary idea of the selfish gene, which more or less says that two genetically similar organisms are more inclined to act selflessly to, uh, towards each other, and then the selfish gene and those behaviors kind of operating those two organisms working with each mm -hmm. other is then passed down evolutionarily to the benefit of the gene and not the actual organism itself, which okay. is interesting, but also has some, you know, deeper contexts of what Google's ultimate goal is that I'm sure we'll get into here. Yeah, some ethical questions to say mm -hmm. the least. Um, so, Dane, should we reshape society? Um, I mean, this has really been in the wraps. Like, this came out in 2016, and it's just now catching fire. Um, I don't know if that's cause for alar alarm or anything, but uh, I, I think that handing over our decisions to a, a digital entity, something that doesn't know the feelings and the, the true thought processes of a human, mm -hmm. it's only picking up these residual bits of, you know, oh, I like to eat here every now and then. I post this. I'm, I'm here on Facebook. Uh, here's my location. And, you know, it's just picking up those residual bits. And I, I really don't think it fully uh, encompasses what it means to be human. Yeah. So it, it could start out as like a limited thing. Like um, I was reading an example of the Verge article and it said something like, if you're going to hail an Uber cab, and you set your goal within the platform to save money, for example, then it might recommend you to actually phone a friend or take a carpool, little things like that. But you're right, like how, how far can they take it and what, what can they understand? Is it, is it just a surface level for now of, oh, maybe I shouldn't buy those ho-hos or those zingers or, mm -hmm. or and maybe I should pick up something a little more healthy? And is that good? I mean, like that seems like a good thing on the surface to me, but you're right is is giving one entity all this power and and data collection the right thing or is it already happening and maybe like what's going on with i mean how much data do we already give up freely that we don't really realize mm -hmm. I mean, exactly and yeah. that's that's the interesting thing google has so much access to our data you know those of us who use gmail um all those emails are read through and added to the database mm -hmm. um all the Google searches we perform daily, you know, anything on a Google account or even just through IP addresses is kind of added to this database. And, uh, you know, most people might be shocked to realize you can request all the information Google holds on you. Mm -hmm. And usually it's, you know, 35 to 50 gigabytes per person, right. which is thousands of yeah. Microsoft Word pages in comparison. But, the interesting thing I was reading yeah, yeah. is the selfish ledger has patents on it that not only will work with you to achieve your goals, but in the future actually tell you what your life goals should be. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Which is starting to get into that kind of dystopian society of Google deciding what is best for you. Yeah, and, the moral authority, so to speak. Mm -hmm. That's, to me, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that, but hmm. There is a quote on there that I think you know rings true to what we had just talked about uh, on the Verge article, saying that it's not a it's not a radical departure from what Google's already done, and um, it's just a conceptual video, you know, taking it to the logical extreme. So maybe there are some patents involved. Um, I think they're thinking ahead and trying to spark some some debate. But the fact of the matter is they they have the 
means and the capabilities to do this kind of thing. And that alone is kind of terrifying and interesting to me um, that they're thinking on this now global and human race level on mm -hmm. on not just providing services but possibly modifying that's like the dystopian part is modifying the behaviors of people yeah. for maybe yeah. for the better and you know that's another that's a debate that we could get into that would take much longer but you know i i don't know how i feel about it other than that it is kind of i think it's coming and i don't know if there's much we can do to stop it at this point or if our government's even equipped to know how to stop it oh, yeah. you know exactly so and then just kind of looping back to what Eric was saying, um, we already give them so much information. You know, we have watches that, you know, count our steps and our heartbeat mm -hmm. and our health. Where we go. Um, <laughs> we are buying Amazon food now. Yeah. Um, they know our, our health patterns. Um, and then we kind of give these residual bits of, of who we are. We reveal that, you know, your political affiliation on Facebook or you know, your gender or age and that, that those sort of things that, you know, kind of came out in the, the Cambridge Analytica mm -hmm. that was used. Um, you, you, you mind going in kind of on your take of Cambridge Analytica and how yeah. it relates? Yeah. I, it is interesting because so much of the Cambridge Analytica scandal was, it was controversial not because of, more so because so many people don't read all of these terms of services. You mm -hmm. know, I think they're inherently made to be confusing and long, so people right. will breeze over them. But at the end of the day, so much of this basic information we're offering up in, you know, with every account we sign up for, for, for every BuzzFeed quiz we take. And um, mm -hmm. in my opinion, I kind of stand on one extreme of it. I'm all for this big data aggregation because I've seen, you know, small bits here and there of Google or, you know, other platforms starting to suggest things in my life that have actually made it better whether it yeah. be courses or things that I want to learn and then taking those and actually seeing positive results you know while some people want control over you know their life and the privacy they give out which is absolutely you know understandable I believe that the more data that we collect the better you know our lives will become but of course, there's the uh, the AI side to it all, where we don't, you know, we don't really know what AI is doing yet, and a lot of the people who create it aren't really sure why it's working, but just know that it is working, which is definitely scary in a lot of ways. <laughs> and I think you kind of touched on, you know, uh, can we have our cake and eat it too? Yeah. Like, it's is it like, you know, I love getting ads for, you know, clothing companies or you know, shoes or whatever that I may like and I may wear. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, sometimes I do click on those ads and sometimes yeah. I do follow it through. But like, are we willing to take that a step further and make other actions like life decisions <laughs> based by a Google entity? Exactly. Yeah, and you know, I think like with any technology, technological advancement, we're scared at first when cell phones and the internet come out. This is the next like, you know, artificial intelligence, data aggregation, that's all the next step in all this. And yeah, is it scary? But as long as it's focused on improving the lives of, of human beings, I, I think it's a good thing in a sense. People ought to just, you know, take, take care when dealing with this, you know, um, figuring out the ethical questions and talking through them before all these things come about. I think that's an important step of the process. So I think having, you know, the dialogue of what's right, what's wrong, across our you know global society is an important step in, in this to figure out what people actually want and do they want to be a part of this world and do we have a choice but um, I think that wraps up everything so uh, you know subscribe like us follow us stay tuned